Ages were the first to fall violently ill from the sickness we now know as Sorax. I can vividly recall my father lying on his bed while his muscles passed as he choked on his own vomit. I stood at his side, frozen in place, and refusing to leave as I held back sobs, his pupils dilating until his entire eyes were like an inky blackness. He tried to speak, turning his head towards me, but opening his mouth only brought for another torrent of vomit. I remember seeing something, but that detail was lost in me now. I remember staring into his glazed eyes as his hair as his hearing became less pronounced, and he was suddenly, he was suddenly very still. I let out a wail and ran to my room, unprepared and unwilling to face the truth. My mother was the first to pass. Then my older brother, who was just turned 17, and finally my father. I had not considered what could have caused the disease myself. Else, if it were in fact contagious, I thought myself lucky though tragically lucky at that. I fell asleep in the corner, hobbled in the blanket that previously kept my mother warm. Her perfume made the putrid aroma somewhat tolerable, perhaps just enough so that I could drift off. I remember perishing bangings next. next. A series of muffled inquiries from opposite side of the locked room. They were shouting for survivors, looking fervently for anyone who was still alive. Despite the breakup, I rushed to the door and unlocked it to a and unlocked it to face that I would come to identify as the day crew. Their faces were obscured by large gas masks fitted with some sort of capsule on either side of their cheeks. Their breathing was slow and muttering. Their voices were nearly impossible to hear over their mechanical wheezing. <laughs> They were covered from head to toe in black regulation hazmat material with orange text reading Day Crew on their back. They ordered me out of the main hall, where I managed to catch a sight of 14 other children around my age being told directions and filed into lineup. Once the entire group has been examined, we began our trek out into the streets, which was a vision of chaos and destruction. We had heard the noises of looting and desperation from our homes, but we haven't ventured off to the outside world for weeks of fear of catching the sickness ourselves. They were even more day crew that they were, were burning the bodies that had fallen to the street, trying to purge the air as they kept their distance from the resulting fumes we were silently ushered into the back of a large truck that took us to the south away from the cities and servers that have dense growth into of the forest. When the band came to a screeching halt, the door swung open and to reveal more day crew, who ushered us out into the forest clearing. We were interrogated about our exposure to anyone with Sorax, as we felt any symptoms like nausea or vertigo. So we have all witnessed our family's members falling ill, I had tried in vain to treat them. We were all perfectly fine in any physical sense. The day crew initially told us that they were perplexed about, immu about our immunity to our sickness, as anyone who came in contact with it was sure to fall ill just hours later, so it was a shock to see that some of us have been living in this nightmare for weeks to end. As they administered more tests and asked more questions, however, we were told that the immunity was tied with a hormone cell that the disease was using to compromise the immune system. And since we were all too young to properly develop it, the disease was unable to make us fall ill. We were told that they could. We were told that they could wanted to study us, that we wanted to live under the cover of the forest, as in quarantine, that we would hope to extract a cure from our group that they could use to heal the world and get rid of Sorax disease. They tried their best efforts to sound positive if in light of the situation but it was obvious that even they were doubtful of their efforts, that there were no guarantee for any of their tests to follow through. Still, they kept the mood optimist and promised us that we could save countless lives with our efforts. First, they built a secluded village in the woods, providing us each with a makeshift house carved into the tree trunks around the area. This was led to a simple tree house also had a single bed on the far table end in the, and in the middle, 
we were told that the first thing in the morning we were going to have our blood taken, so we weren't allowed out to eat anything until then. I was fine by that. I had not my hunger for days. The image of my mother and father and brother crowded my thoughts instead. I didn't sleep much. The forest was chirping with crickets, and the muffled bickerings of the night crew kept me up in the, day, in, the day, in the early hours. We were walking the next day and fell onto a single line to have blood drawn while the needles were prepared for us. We were told that we would have to receive a vaccination that would prevent us from going through puberty to present a hormone that might lead to a cure. It was never elaborated on that time that we would never be able to grow up or have children or it was unlikely to live beyond the first few hours of infection. Never mind the next few years of our adulthood was seen as an unnecessary sacrifice. This continued for weeks. We, could, we would continue to receive vaccinations and assure that a cure would soon arise, but times were getting desperate. I started listening on to the muffled conversation of the night crew during the night. It became easy to make out what they were saying over time. They sat beneath my bedroom window, oh, next to a cracking fire. I discovered that our encampment was the only one surrounding the area, and they deduced that Sorax was act originally came from the sea to the west. They passed out horror stories of people that lived by the shore, or they were hit the worst. That they had gone to completely, they, they had gone completely pale, and they begin to sprout sprouts out of their elbows, hips, and their toes. They have kept constantly hydrated, or else their skin will begin to flake and peel. Their pupils had dilated, and the entire eye was colored black. And at this bit, it was thought my father sitting on the couch and writhing in pain. There was food in the mountains. One, one assured another way they were getting them in droves. Perhaps to keep them from spoiling. Another spoke up, revealing they had managed to find expecting women who weren't exposed to sorax, and they were kept under the mountains to bear their young away from the sickness. The topic came back to the present situation, and they began to discuss our encampment and to result, and our that our results were comp promising, weren't being worked on fast enough. There were accusations claimed, the fingers pointed, but at least they settled on keeping their mood positive, that something would come out long eventually, that we just needed more time. Discussions drifted back to the horror stories of the west coast, which clearly sparked sick interest in the group as they talked about talk of the corpses that had been found along the water that drifted ashore, each with deep black eyes. I rolled over my bed. Unable to listen to any more of the stories without images of my own family staring up towards the ceiling, praying that we would manage to find a cure soon, and that I would have to hear about the people of the West anymore. It had been nearly a month of testing when something went wrong. Oh, a few hours after our latest vaccination, several kids began complaining of distorted vision. They could see trailing lights in the air, making their way across the plains while their faces were covered with their masks. I could sense the worry that played across their faces. We were told all that they were just visual hallucinations and they, would, and they would subside in a few hours. When I awoke the next day and glimpsed outside, I too could see either trailing knights drifting towards the air. They forbid anyone to discuss the lights any further, though it was clear that everyone could see them. As we lined up, after have blood run, one of the day crew became terribly ill and began to vomit through his gas mask. With a frenzy, in a frenzy panic, we were ordered back to our homes as they led the sick member away into the woods. We were told to come out and organize ourselves into the line for decontamination. After recovering, everyone with a chalk-like substance, they began to scrub away some of the foul-smelling liquid until they were until we were assured that we were safe to deal once more with this excessive procedure, a part of our daily regimen. And it's now we call us calling and, not, and it's how we started calling them the scrubs, rather than their official titles. We were disillusioned, and it was obvious that they, they were as well. The visual hallucinations began to worsen. Even though we had stopped taking vaccination a long time ago, some kids began to befriend imaginary creatures in the air, speaking to the trails of life. I was horrified that I might start losing my sanity as well. I didn't want to eavesdrop on the best 
after the discussion over the fire that night, which had gradually worsened with each passing week. With the training desperation in their voices, the night crew began to exchange information about the other areas. The fruit of the mountains have been contaminated, the rumors began to surface that all the birds have resulted in defects, with each child being well over a healthy bird weight with their eyes far apart. They would likely succumb to disease and perish as well. It was decided the cure that had been tested on the sorex ridden patients hadn't shown any signs of preventing the sickness, but rather had simply slowed the progress of the sickness so they can claim lives in days rather than hours. While this was a bit of good news, they focused on how little was accomplished over such a large span of time and how anyone with the sickness shouldn't keep stringing along, but rather destroy so that they couldn't contaminate anyone else. There was a coldness in their voices. I rolled over my bed, had to watch the light splayed across my vision, dancing across my eyes until I fell asleep. The scrubs were gone on the next day. Leaving us behind as they failed experiments, the other children seemed unaware of this and decided to continue befriending imaginary creatures. In the depression, I sunk off bed only to suffer a violent, violent burst of passes and shiver in the process. I drifted in and out of sleep that night. night. I was having one recurring nightmare after another. When I awoke, I heard something pass from my doorway, something that couldn't possibly be he be there. Rolling over, I reluctantly look up, up into the air and watch a trailing ball of light around my house before descending towards my bed. Hello Link, wake up! The Great Deku Tree has summoned you!